We want to welcome you to another edition of God's Living Word, a program brought to you by First Presbyterian Church of Greenville, Ohio. First Presbyterian is located in historic downtown Greenville at 114 East 4th Street. We can be reached by phone at 937-548-3188. We hope as a result of this service that you will find that our message is uplifting and meaningful to help you in your daily walk in spiritual life as a Christian. Throughout the week, we have several ministries that I know will be of help to you. Wednesdays in particular, there are several Bible studies for both adults as well as children. Our Logos ministry is for children preschool through fifth grade. We have Jam, Jesus and Me for junior highs and then our senior high ministry Wednesday evening. If you do not have a church home, we invite you to participate and be involved in our worshiping community, whether on the airwaves or certainly personally in the congregation. At this time, we'd like to invite you to be part of our family of faith here at First Presbyterian as we worship the Lord and listen to God's living word.
Almighty and merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against your holy laws. We have left undone those things which we should have done, 
and we have done those things which we should not have done. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare those, O God, who confess their faults. Restore those who are penitent according to your promises declared unto men in Christ Jesus our Lord. Grant that we may live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of his name. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us continue with the Apostle Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From then shall she come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. going to talk about choices this morning. Hmm. Well, you know, yesterday I went out and I gathered some things and I thought maybe you'd like to take some of these things back with Miss Jenny or maybe later on and have them as a snack. Let's see which you would rather have. This is the first thing I got. Would you like to have those as a snack? No, you should have seen the looks on their faces. Well, why not? They're hard. You know, we've, we learned probably when we were about that baby's age that things like this were hard and we didn't want them anymore. You don't want to choose the rocks. Well, okay. Let's see if this might be something you'd rather have. those blueberries and apples look pretty good so you choose the fruit over the rocks hmm let's think about other things that we get to choose do you get to choose what you wear sometimes maybe not some people don't some um, do you get to choose what toys or things like that to play with yeah yeah, you do. Uh, some harder things that might be cho- hard, harder to choose. Do you get to choose whether you want to be nice or naughty? Well, we like we like to think we're going to choose to be nice, but um, all of us, I think, are naughty occasionally. Um, how about sharing or being selfish? Do you get to choose that? That's a choice. How about to obey or disobey? How about telling the truth or to tell a lie? Those are all choices we have as well, and they aren't as easy of choice as choosing fruit over rocks. Um, You know, if we choose God's way, God's way will give us a calmness It'll give us some happiness. It'll make us feel love. But if we choose, let's say we choose to tell a lie. You know, pretty soon we get to feeling pretty guilty about that. It doesn't bring us peace. How about if we choose to be selfish and not share something? 
You know, that's not any fun either. Well, God's way always brings us a more healthy and a happier life. I would like to read to you something that's in Deuteronomy chapter 30, parts of verses 19 and 20. It says, speak God speaking, and he says, I have set before you life. And let's think of life as being God's way to live. And death, which is the wrong way. Blessings and cursings. Now, choose life, or God's way, that you may love the Lord your God. Listen to his voice and hold fast to him. For the Lord is your life. So when you choose God's way, your life is so much better because it's centered on him and he gives you some blessings. Okay, let's bow our heads for prayer. Father God, we come to you this morning with these thoughts and with these, this prayer that we may choose you and these ways that make us happier and make those who are around us happier. Help us to choose your way, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Now comes the time for 500,000 announcements. Um, we just want to welcome all of you. And if you're visiting with us, there are welcoming packets in the back. They're little blue uh, plastic uh, containers, and they have information on our church. So if you're interested, please take one of those packets. There's a friendship register at the end of the pew. Please sign it, pass it down, pass it back so you get to know who is in your pew. Um, on Saturday, May 12th, from 8.30 to noon, there will be a car wash in the First Presbyterian Church parking lot. Donations will be accepted and will help defray the cost of the upcoming mission trip to Houston. A good gift for mom for Mother's Day is to have her car washed, and you can become her favorite child if you do that. On Sunday, May 20th, there will be a mission trip fundraiser lasagna lunch following the senior send-off worship service. The meal will include lasagna, salad, bread, and dessert. Now, the, uh, there's RSVP forms in today's bulletin. Please sign those and then put them in the uh, giving boxes back in the back. Um, one of our dear friends of our church uh, has left us, and her funeral is this afternoon at 2. That's Lucy Wolf. She is uh, uh, someone that no one can ever forget her. She is, was just a wonderful, wonderful person. The graduating seniors need to turn in their uh, photos to the office, or their parents need to do that, because you know the kids aren't. Um, so they have to be in there by May the 13th. And First Presbyterian is planning to participate in two upcoming First Friday events. And the first one is June the 1st, and they're going to offer uh, decorating cookies. And then on August 3rd, they have ice cream with toppings. And if you can volunteer for that, just call the office and tell Angie, I'd like to volunteer. Um, there's one more announcement that I would like to give, and that's Steve and Lisa Headley's 40th wedding anniversary is today. <laughs> She's up there, he's over there. 
they know what it takes to live together for 40 years, and that is be separate. <laughs> All right, let us settle down and let's give a dedication of our gifts to, uh, to our church. And um, they are in the rear of the sanctuary as you come in, and that's to, for you to place your donations and your tithes. Let us pray. O oh, most merciful and gracious God, from whose open hand we have all received much, we ask you to accept these offerings from your people. Remember in your love those who have brought them. Remember also those persons and purposes for which their gifts are given. Follow these gifts of your blessings, that they may promote peace and goodwill and advance the kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, in his, whose name we pray. Amen. And let us uh, bring up Lily Hayes for our scripture, Matthew 6, 14 to 15. Hear the word of the Lord, Matthew 6, 14 through 15. For if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. This is the word of the Lord.
I invite you to take your uh, Blue Pew Bible, if you will, and turn to Luke 23, 32 to 38, on page 89 in the New Testament section of your Blue Pew Bible, and let us stand as we join together and read this responsibly. Let us hear the word of the Lord. I will begin. Two others also who were criminals were led away to be put to death with him. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine. And saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him, This is the king of the Jews. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. You may be seated. of an insult. You know how it feels when it comes down on you. Get angry, perhaps upset, but also a little helpless. Unless you're the two women I'm about to tell you about. In American lore, uh, these two kind of volleyed back and forth, and they were known for doing so in their relationship if you want to call it as such. I'm talking about Dorothy Parker, poet, satirist, and also one who is known for her wisecracks. And then also uh, Claire Booth Luce, no relation, uh, who is also an author. Uh, She was uh, an American politician as well as U.S. ambassador. And one day after an event, they met at the exit of this particular venue. And uh, Luce said to Parker, age before beauty. And Parker went through the door, and then she said, pearls before swine. (laughs) Now, I don't know about you, but uh, you might want to come out swinging after you heard things like that. But obviously, that doesn't accomplish anything. Insults do hurt. I remember in junior high, my ninth grade year, and I still had that boy soprano voice. And it did open up several doors for me, I will say. Uh, I sang on radio in the Twin Cities. And let me tell you, my high C could shatter the windows. But it also left me feeling kind of low at times. Because you know how peers are. They love to kind of just dig at you. And my oh my, how that happened from time to time. I will say, however, I was kind of exonerated Uh, in front of my peers when our choral director in our school gave me the lead for the musical that year. And that was something that was coveted by any and everybody. And all of a sudden, things changed. Now, the summer after my ninth grade year, my voice changed as well. And that was a good thing. 
Last night, I, uh, I choked on about five almonds. Uh, you almost didn't have a pastor here. We could have said uh, final rites. Uh, however, uh, my voice has changed in another way, as you can tell. But in the midst of that, I know firsthand what it is to show empathy toward those who have been the brunt of insults and ridicule. And perhaps you have as well. Maybe you were that kid out on the field who was, you know, a little clumsy, uh, not coordinated, and you were the last to be chosen for a team. And you know what that feels like. Or maybe, on the other hand, you were that nerd who was uh, always a little clumsy with the opposite sex. And so, you know, kids would kind of talk about that. Or you had two club feet out on the dance floor, and people made jokes. Or you were a little overweight during your adolescence. Or that uh, deodorant didn't quite work at that point in time. I remember one girl in our sixth grade class, she was always called stinky. I can only imagine how those words must have hurt her. Our Lord understood insult and ridicule. And we can laugh about it, we can remember those days, but he really felt those words as well. And so I invite you to open up to your uh, Blue Pew Bible, page 89, to our text in Luke chapter 23. Here Jesus is hanging in pain. He's in the process of dying. And needless to say, as the picture shows, he wasn't wearing much, half naked, a loincloth. That in itself would be difficult, right? But more than that, he was being mocked. He had a crown on his head. The king of the Jews, they said. And if you are the king of the Jews, you saved others. Come on, save yourself. You've saved others. Save yourself. You said that uh, you'd destroy the temple and in three days rebuild it. Hey, time's wasting, Jesus. Better come down from that cross. Get to it. You can only imagine what those words must have felt like. You know, there's that rhyme that we grew up with. Sticks and stones can... But words will... Do you really believe that? I never did. They hurt. Those words can't be taken back. It's like that, you know, children's sermon illustration. You squeeze the toothpaste out and you tell the kids to put it back in the tube. You can't do it. Words can't be taken back. We we ruminate over them. We think about them. They hurt. Can you imagine laughing at someone who's dying? It'd be like going down to the fourth floor there at Wayne Hospital in the new hospice unit and going in one of those rooms and saying, (laughs) you're drooling. Can't you keep the spit in your mouth? Why all those tubes? can't hear what you're saying. Can't you speak up? You see what I mean? And that's what they were doing to Jesus. As he was hanging there, just trying to take in another breath. We can only imagine the response that he could have made. He could have come out with that first punch. And who among us would blame him if He did. Or what about some different kind of words? But that's not how Jesus responds. 
In our text, in verse 34, we hear those words. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they are doing. Forgive them. You know, 2,000 years after the fact, it's easy to sit in judgment over those who ridiculed and scorned Jesus. But let's face it. He says they did it in ignorance. They didn't know what they were doing. They didn't understand that he was God's son, the anointed one, God's Messiah. They did it in ignorance. And so the question really is then, who really nails Jesus to the cross? The Jews? Well, certainly they were party to that. The Romans? Well, they actually took the hammer and did the act. They didn't just bear false witness like the Jews that put him there. But the truth is, you did. And I did. By our own sin. Sin of disbelief, if you want to call it ignorance. But other acts that were hurtful. Insults, ridicule, other things. We were the ones who nailed him to the cross. And Jesus doesn't give us the first punch. He doesn't say, hey, your time is coming. You're going to die, and here come the judge. No, he says, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they are doing. Forgive them. You know, as we think about that overwhelming love, amazing grace, that God has shown us. What kind of a response does it bring out in each one of us? First of all, it needs to be a response of gratitude. Gratitude to God. For the undeserved love, unmerited grace that our Lord has shown us. Grace. G-R-A-C-E. God's riches. His forgiveness, his love, his abiding presence, the hope of eternal life, God's riches at Christ's expense. Gratitude. This morning when we got up and out of bed, were there words of appreciation on our lips? Or did we even forget to remember that the Lord was with us? And we just went into the bathroom and brushed our teeth and washed our face and moved on. Words of appreciation. If we didn't take time then, maybe now, to just thank the Lord for what he's done. But secondly, a response of obedience. Obedience to God. You see... If Jesus did that for us, shouldn't we follow him and obey his ways? Absolutely. I mean, if Jesus loves us with that tremendous love, ought we not to love others and God as well to show that love? And what better way, perhaps, than in the text of Luke chapter 7, There, or Luke chapter 6, rather, at verse 27. But I say to you that, listen, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, and pray for those who abuse you. Yeah, people may have made us the brunt of an insult, but that doesn't give us the right or justify that we do that in return. Instead, we are called to love selflessly, 
unconditionally, sacrificially. And it's more clear for us in Matthew chapter 6 at verse 14. For if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Did we catch that? If we are to be forgiven by God and he says, Father, forgive them, then we need to forgive others. Otherwise, our eternal destiny is really at risk. Forgive them. So today, as we come to the communion table, as we share of the bread and drink of the cup, I hope we remember the words that our Lord shared with us, poignant words. Forgive them, and so let us forgive others. And in response, show gratitude and demonstrate that gratitude through our obedience. Forgive them. Amen. Let's just bow in prayer together. Our loving and gracious God, forgive us when we've closed off the channel of love between you and us and exerted our own way. Thank you for your forgiveness and help us to forgive others. For we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us stand as we sing our communion hymn, Be Known to Us in Breaking Bread. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Dear Lord, there are so many things wrong in this world, but there's so many things that are right. We get to turn our faces to the sun and feel its warmth. We get to smell the fragrant flowers, hear the laughter of children, taste the food that you have given us. We are greatly blessed. Help us be a blessing to others. Keep us strong so that we may help the weak. We pray for those who are lost and can't find their way and who are misjudged and misunderstood. We pray for those who don't know you or who do not believe in you. We thank you that we believe. You have been so generous in your love with the gifts of Jesus' life, his death and resurrection. There are those in our church who have been so generous in their time and their love of your son to bring our church closer to you. Be particularly close to Holly Finnard, who is going in for surgery tomorrow. Help her, her uh, doctors know exactly what to do and that she will recover quickly. Be with Frida Condon in her illness, the family and friends of Lucy Wolf who are missing her and to Mark and Tony Hagee in the home going of their son, Andrew. Be close to those on our prayer list, especially Andrew Brunson, who is in prison in Turkey. Let him be a light of your Christian love. 
We pray for peace and thank you for the love and joy of our parents that they have given us in our homes and our lives. We continue to worship you with a prayer you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now go out into the world in peace. Have courage. Hold on to what is good. Render to no person evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing that his Holy Spirit goes with you. And now may the Lord bless and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and to be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance and give you his peace both now and in the life to come and forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. We hope you've enjoyed another edition of God's Living Word, a program brought to you by First Presbyterian Church in downtown Greenville. If you're looking for a church home, we would love to invite you to come to our Sunday school hour, which begins Sundays at 9.30, with morning worship to follow at 10.30. We're located in historic downtown Greenville at 114 East 4th Street, 
We can be reached at 937-548-3188. And if you're looking on the web, we're at www.greenvilleprez.org. Throughout the week, we've got several ministries, small groups, Bible studies, along with youth and children's ministries on Wednesday afternoon and into the evening. There's something for everyone. And we do hope that you might uh, consider First Presbyterian. We would love to have you part of our worshiping community, whether it be in person or on our telecast Wednesday evenings. But until next time, may God's word dwell richly in your life. Goodbye from First Presbyterian.